Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and I'm back with another artwork of Mumei from Hollow Alive. So, I kind of just uh, planned out um, ahead here. Couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do when I started out until I got a good reference that I was like, yay! So, the thing about references is you can get them from many places. I used to get them from Pixiv and Pinterest, but the problem with Pinterest is it's just full of so much AI stuff now, and it's like, man. <laughs> but, um, I will say, there are some things that AI does get right. If you're looking for, um, kind of unique poses, but you can find a few. The issue is they don't draw the hands half the time so you have to kind of figure out what to do with the hands yourself and that's a big problem I have whenever I'm drawing them from anything referencing that used AI at some point is they don't draw the hands and hands are super expressive and very important but for the most part Pixiv is really good about getting you good poses so I recommend Pixiv a lot of professional artists on there who do very good work and you can learn a lot from them so now I've kind of changed up the idea I wanted to go for something almost um, what's the word like almost a candid shot I guess that's the word I'm looking for I wanted to do a picture of like Mume kind of putting a hair tie in and being like I'm almost finished so that's definitely uh, something that I, I wanted to do, and I kind of succeeded at it. I, I do wish I had drawn the hand a bit better, though, because I, I kind of hid the hands because I was being bad. Don't hide hands. Don't be like me. Try your best to learn hands. It's, it's definitely important. Um, as you can see with the guidelines for the head, I drew the side of the head, which it's good, important to remember that the side of the head is flat. Remembering that will help you out a whole lot in the long run because the eye ends right where that flat part of the head begins. It'll help you kind of figure out where to place your eyes. So I hope that helps. So I kind of was planning out the hair here. Mume's hair is interesting and a little bit difficult to uh, get 100% right. It's why I like drawing her in a ponytail so much because... Ponytails are cute. I like drawing ponytails. What can I say? And I went for kind of like a crop top, like a tied shirt, which is definitely uh, very cute. I, I enjoy drawing uh, Hololive or VTubers in casual outfits. I think it's very uh, cool to do. And it's just, it's adorable. I love it, personally. So now here pretty soon we're going to start blocking out uh, shading with... Um, a multiply layer that way we can kind of carve out the light that we want to use I think I remembered to draw the background this time so yay no more accidentally forgetting not to um, include the background so sorry I've been forgetting to draw the background and hit record that's that's definitely been a problem with my recent videos so sorry about that <laughs> So I was just adjusting things with the liquify tool to kind of look better. Um, doing some aglow layer to kind of pop the shadows out a bit. And whenever I draw backgrounds, I usually don't draw lines. And because it looks a lot better without lines, in my personal opinion, makes it look more natural. And the background here was pretty simple. Just uh, on top of a bed with uh, light shining through the side of the uh, window. And there we go. That's the basic idea of what I was going for with this artwork. So now we're on to line art. And with line art, um, it's just very thin lines and that I draw in the thickness manually. I really like the head shape I did for this particular artwork. I'm getting so much better at heads. I'm super proud of myself. I feel like I'm finally figuring them out. Now I just need to figure out hair and clothes and maybe hands. Because I actually managed to figure out feet. Um, uh, I learned through other artists and tutorials how to structure a foot. So it's become a whole lot easier for me. And I'm super proud of my progress I've made on drawing feet. Um, in terms of drawing wrinkles, I do a pretty good job with the line art. It's just whenever I render, it just doesn't feel correct. And I really need to improve on that. And that's definitely a problem I have. So... 
I I feel like the the waist kind of comes out of nowhere after the shirt ends, and that's definitely a problem with this artwork. But it's not terrible. Um, it's the the pants are a little low too. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Um, I like how I did the eyes on this one. I'm, I'm gonna start doing eyes more like this. It definitely looks very fierce. So yeah, I'm definitely enjoying how I'm doing eyes lately. They, they definitely stand out a bit more. Drawing the hair tie. Now we're gonna start rendering the hair. Oh, uh, not rendering, uh, lining the hair. I definitely really enjoy, um, drawing hair. I'm just not the best at it yet, but I'll get better. I know I can get better. I've gotten this far. I can get further. <laughs> My advice for getting better at art is study, study, study. Anytime you draw something for fun, at least take 15 or 20 minutes of your day to really study form and perspective. That definitely helps out a whole lot. It it tends to guide you more whenever you're drawing, whenever you understand perspective and um, form. And then there's a book on how to render. I keep forgetting the author's name, but it's called How to Render. Um, you can find it for $20 or you can find the PDF online for free thanks to sites like the Wayback Machine where they have like libraries where you can like borrow the book. It's, it's really good. I highly recommend it. It helps out a whole lot. It, it explains the like mathematics of lighting. It's so cool. And I'm definitely starting to get a hang of it now. Uh, I recommend that book to everyone. Seriously, check it out. So now we're going to start adding the base colors. I just use the fill tool. Um, I go for kind of a saturated um, look here. And then kind of get the eyes in. Uh, I start with the darker shade for the clothes because I want to add the light to it. Usually I light carve, but I didn't do it this time. Um, just a preference. There's really no rhyme or reason behind it. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Usually I do do it, but this time I didn't. So my rendering is super quick. So um, sorry in advance for me trying to figure out how to uh, how to pace everything. So here we go. There, there's kind of a long pause here. I think I was trying to like piece everything together and figure out what I was doing. So now we're going to start rendering the clothes. I use the selection pen to highlight the breasts individually. That way I can kind of make them round like a sphere using an airbrush. And kind of just give them more um, depth. You, I recommend using the selection pen all the time. It's super important for getting... Um, really uh, detailed gradients while adding a hard edge where it's needed. So I definitely recommend that. Just adding in all the details. Adding a gradient to the face. Um, try not to over detail your face. I tend to make that mistake kind of often. Anime faces are super simple. I added a highlight, kind of darkened the, uh, the base colors a bit and just kind of added lighting where it needs to be. Added a gradient to the clothes and then add a multiply layer on top and kind of erase parts of it to make it look more in depth. I think I did okay on the clothes this time. It's still not perfect, um, but it's it's not bad. I think I did all right. Add shadows where the uh, care where the arm should be and light where the light shines through. Added a gradient and a multiply layer to the clothes as well. Sorry, the pants. So now we're getting somewhere. Added a gradient to the hair, multiply layer, the usual stuff. Added the highlights in there, had them kind of curve nicely. I should have reduced the opacity of them and had them be more subtle, but I didn't do that, and I really should have looking back at it. But it's not bad. 
So now we did the eyes. Now we're gonna start doing the background here pretty soon. Adding some ad glow to kind of make it pop a bit more. Darken everything on the background, make the character stand out a bit more, add the brightness through the window and reduce the opacity, a tonal curve to bring it to life. And we are really rolling through it now. Hard light layer to make the entire image glow, some color balance. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.